Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today I am trying something that I have toyed with this idea in my head for a while now, but I've been very intimidated to do it. I'm going to recreate one of my most, actually the most popular floral tutorial of mine on my YouTube channel, this one. Um, people have really enjoyed it and I feel like I haven't been able to recreate that. So today I decided to try and redo it, but the style I feel is more like me now. So when I did that, it was kind of like a, a fluke. <laughs> it kind of, it was a happy accident as Bob Ross likes to say. And it turned out really, really well. Um, but now I wanted to try it with how I would paint it now, four years later. So you'll see in this video, I try it and it's kind of a similar style, but it's a little bit different. And then there's a time lapse of me at the end trying it again with a slightly different technique because I thought maybe you'll see. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's jump in. Okay, friends, so today I'm trying a painting that I have wanted to do for a very long time, but have honestly been so scared to and intimidated by my own self. So my most popular floral video is this abstract poppies video that has 1.2 million current views. And I've decided that I want to try and recreate that painting, how I would do it today, because I did that video, how many years ago, four years ago, when I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. I was still not a beginner, but I was still at the beginning of my watercolor and YouTube journey. And I created that painting as a happy accident and it kind of blew up. And ever since then, I've been really scared to try it again. So my style has changed, I feel like quite a bit. I have learned how to new use new shape brushes. Um, I have different watercolors. It's just, it's a totally different time now, but I wanted to see if I could paint something inspired by it. So I'm not gonna copy the tutorial I did. I'm gonna see if I can recreate it the way I would now. So let's jump in by getting to see what materials I'm using today. Today I'm just using my Academy watercolor block. There's only a few sheets left on this, so I thought I'd use that. And then for my watercolors, so in the video, the original one, I used Winsor Newton Opera Rose, which was this vibrant neon pink. And I don't have that in my Paul Rubens palette or I think my Winsor Newton one anymore, but I do have this super bright neon pink from Art Car Creations. So I thought I'd use that, which this is where I put all my Art Car Creation handmade watercolors in. And then the bottom row here is the K. Hanna Honey Hues, this row right there, which I also love how bright hers are. So I'm gonna be using the pink from Art Car Creations, and then I'm gonna be using the yellow and purple and green from K. Hanna Honey Hues. So those are the watercolors I'm using today. And then for my brushes, I'm gonna try and use my three quarter inch flat brush because it's something I'm trying to get better at using. My friend Jillian from Brush Movement on YouTube and Crafty Fox on Instagram uses a flat brush a lot for her florals and I've been learning how to use it myself and I'm actually really enjoying it. So I thought maybe I'd bust it out for this to give it a try. I also have my size 10 filbert and then a size six round. So that's what I'm using today. I don't really have a plan on how this is gonna go, um, but we're just gonna go for it. So let's begin. So I'm gonna start by wetting up my colors. So I have my pink here, and then I have my yellow, then I have this purple, and then green. So I think I wanna start by using this like really watered down vibrant pink just to kind of map out my colors and I'm not going to do the exact same flowers I'm going to kind of just I don't know I don't know I don't know we're just going to go for it okay so I always want to start off light and then drop in color so I'm just going to kind of outline not outline but just kind of grab some petal shapes and I like the geometricness of using this kind of flat brush. It's just, it's interesting to use. And honestly, before 
I started watching Jillian, I never really considered using a flat brush for this outside of like landscapes. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to try it for this. So I'm just kind of laying down these shapes. And the one thing I've learned with a frat, frat brush, flat brush is that if you kind of, instead of doing like straight stagnant kind of movements, if you, this is just like a little cheat sheet. If you curve it, you'll get much more curved. So I feel like when we think of a flat brush, we're thinking that we're going to get petals that are like these squares. But if you actually use it on a curve, you can get these nicely rounded petals. Like it doesn't have to be, you know what I mean? Even on its side, you can get these beautiful shapes. So give it a try. I highly suggest it. Um, I'm still learning how to use this, but I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it more. And it's just a lot of fun. So now I remember in my original painting, I had like a lot of water that was just kind of loose all over the page. And then I just kind of let some colors bleed and blend. So I'm, I wonder if I should do that. Let me just take some clean water and I'm just going to kind of lay it in some of the background so we can get some of these color bleeds, but making sure I'm using clean water, just laying it there. So if it just touches it, it will get a softer effect. I think Like see how this edge is already kind of soft, starting to soften out. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to start dropping in some of that other color. So we had some yellow in there. That might be a bit too much yellow. Like that. And then the center was that more purpley color. So I actually might save that. I'm just going to drive some of that deep pink in there. kind of like it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Okay. I'm going to do one over here now. I think I kind of want to soften out this edge. Okay. So I'm going to grab light wash of this and then I'm going to bring another one over here. So this is going to be kind of all blended out here just because it's touching some wet water <laughs> because it's touching some wet water opposed to dry water some water just regular old water <laughs> gonna have like a side view almost like that okay grab some of that yellow grab some more of that pink so I feel like some things that I've learned in the past, I gotta see how much, how long ago that video was. I feel like it was a long time ago. Okay, I just checked. It was four years ago that I did that video. So I feel like in the past four years, I have learned quite a bit and my style has changed a lot too. Um, I'm really enjoying, you know, practicing different mediums, practicing different brushes, just learning how to climb out of my box of safety and comfort and really trying to, you know, just make myself a little bit more uncomfortable while trying new things, if that makes sense. Um, and I think that's really important as an artist and finding artists that inspire you and push you to try new things is also great. So Jillian has definitely been one of those artists that have done that for me. Um, you, she definitely needs a lot more followers or subscribers on her channel. Just the things I have learned for her, that from her, the techniques, her use of color has just been so, um, inspiring and helpful. And she's one of the few YouTubers that I actually watch their videos. <laughs> like I try and watch others, but my, my attention span doesn't allow <laughs> for me to be too attentive to some things but because I love her style so much and her her pieces are just they they draw me in I find myself watching her a lot so if you're not already familiar with her you need to go and check her out for sure because she has so many amazing things that you just need to check out okay I'm wondering if I should grab some purple and 
and just start to kind of just add some in. See, it's still giving the same vibes as that original painting, right? Just kind of trying to drop a little bit in there. But it's a little bit different, you know? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I think I did four poppies in the original. So maybe I'll just do... Um, oh, I wanted to do like... Eh? There, some splatter on the wet part especially. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to do one more kind of bud-ish one kind of down here. So I'm going to do this. But yeah, so finding inspiration from artists that really you know, catch your attention, I think is huge because I think when, when people see artists like myself or others on YouTube, they think, you know, we just watch ourselves, we stick to our own style. Um, you know, but for me, I find myself inspired by other artists all the time. And the trick is to try to find your style through inspiration from other people. Right. And I think that's, that's the same with anybody who's not, you know, maybe an established artist. When you're first learning, you're learning from tutorials, but you're also trying not to copy completely. Like you want to copy at the beginning, but then you're like, okay, I've got this down. How do I find my own art style? And that's can be really tricky for a lot of us. So we're struggling with, well, I'm struggling with that too. I don't speak for other people, but I definitely struggle with that too. And trying to find myself as an artist. So I feel like watching others and just kind of learning from them has really helped me in a lot of ways just kind of discover who I am and I'm it's changing and evolving and I am loving it so yeah so okay so I'm gonna add some green I love the vibrancy of these K Hannah Hugh honey honey Hugh, um, watercolors they're just so beautiful they're so vibrant and then this pink from our car creations is gorgeous Okay, so our poppies have these like thin-ish. Stem. And if it bleeds into there, that's totally fine. That's kind of what I'm going for. I want it to be a bit more on the abstract side, like the original. Right? I feel like I need a bit more color up there. Just like a little bit more pink. But enough of it didn't bleed in there. Maybe I'll just do some pink splats up here like that. Okay, so I want to let that those flowers dry because I'm going to do another layer, which I don't remember if I did in the original. Um, I'm actually just going to darken some of these green stems by just adding a little bit of blue to my green. Maybe even a little bit of purple. A little bit more green. wonder if I should add leaves to this one because I didn't to the original but I I do love a good leaf <laughs> and poppy leaves are a lot of fun I don't know do I do no maybe I don't I'm too scared to okay so I'm gonna let this dry and then we will do our second layer Okay, so now that it's dry, I'm going to go in for my second layer. I'm really nervous because I really like the way this one looks and I don't want to mess it up, but it definitely needs something. This one just looks like a blob to me. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use this filbert brush. I think I'm going to try and stick with this uh, flat brush. I'm just really liking it. So now I want to go back in, add some definition to some of the petals, carve some of them out. I'm wondering, like I want this one to have another bottom layer, but I'm wondering if I should go darker on the bottom like the underneath and make these petals lighter or darker. I don't know. I think I'm going to make them darker underneath. So I'm just going to kind of carve out these petals on top. 
and then fill in. I'm actually going to grab my six inch, six inch, six size six bleh, round. <laughs> and I'm going to fill in the bottom petals like this. So it's like the top petals are a little bit more or lighter and defined. And then underneath is darker. I'm grab a bit more. Might even add a little bit of purple. Like that. Do we like that? I don't know if we like that. And then maybe, um, hmm. I don't know, I don't want to ruin it. I'm gonna add a little bit of line texture kind of coming in like that. I want a little bit more purple in there. I think that looks kind of cool. Kind of defines like there's two layers there. And then making it dark right here makes it look like there's a bit of a shadow. But I definitely don't want to do that to every layer. So I'm just going to do some lines. A little bit of yellow. Different colors. Kind of like that. I kind of want another poppy somewhere so I can use a bit of negative space. And then this petal looks a little off here. Maybe I'll just curve the side so it looks like it's folded a little bit. So I'm just darkening this one side here. Like that. Okay, I like that one. I think that one looks really cool. Um, this one, I want to carve out the petal a bit more, like it's kind of a side view, so you're going to see the bottom part of this petal. I feel like it needs to be that kind of uh, dark pink. I'm going to grab some purple. Oh my gosh, if you can hear my son screaming downstairs, I'm sorry. He screams like a little monkey, like a banshee. And that's an excited scream, by the way. <laughs> it's funny, he was doing that in, at the store the other day and people were looking at me like I'm crazy, like my kid's nuts, but you know, that's parenthood. <laughs> okay. Kind of wanna... So I try and do these little lines. I, what I do is I put my brush on its side and I go kind of like to the side and then I flick it in to get these thicker ones so it's not like a drawn out line it's more like a just like a textured line does that make any sense I don't know if I'm making any sense guys it's hard to teach what you're doing when you don't know what you're doing you know you know okay just adding a little bit more to a petal over here just brighten it up I do like the way that one looks I think that looks kind of cool and then I'm just gonna add a bit more purple and I mix it a little bit with my yellow which is muting it just a little bit okay I like it I'm just gonna darken in here a little bit too I like it. Yep, I like it. Okay. And then this one. Okay. This one is making me nervous. I don't know why. So I'm going to try and carve out the shape of this bottom petal. So I'm just doing these kind of like jagged little lines. I remember the base is going to be down here. So the lines are all going to kind of have to come back this way. A 
I'm going to put a purple. And then the center is going to be right around here. So you can even just mark that out if it's easier. I might do another round of petals there. Hmm, I don't know yet. Let's mark these ones out a bit that are kind of up here. So this is a little less abstract, I feel like, than my original. It's a little bit more structure to it, but I don't mind it. It's a different style. Still using the same kind of colors, same kind of color palette. I feel like I might want to put another, like maybe a a bud or something over here to get a little bit of like negative painting going on. A little bit of yellow in here. Got a little bit of purple and do or no, not purple, pink. Just Kind of make it a little bit darker like there's another set of petals kind of close to the center i feel like once we add in the stamens it's gonna really come together and you'll be like oh that's what she was doing <laughs> so i'm gonna separate this petal i want a little bit of purple in here Trying to just separate the petals just so they look a little like it looks a little bit more like a flower. I'm not going to do too much of that. I think I'm going to leave that. Okay, now I think I want to do, like I said, some sort of bud back here. Okay, I'm going to have a couple buds, I think, just to make it look interesting. I'm going to have one kind of peeking back behind here. Like that. And then we're going to have to have the stem also kind of peeking behind. And then maybe one back up here too. I need a bit more green. A little bit of blue. And then I think one over here just kind of like curving like they do will look nice. Just to kind of balance it out a bit. So I'm doing like a half circle and then a little line leaving a little bit of white space in the middle. Like that and then it's going to come down. It's dark in the bottom here a bit. drag through like that a little bit more darkness like that okay that's cool okay and then I want to what do I want to do <laughs> okay and then I want to do the center of the poppy okay so here we go so I'm gonna grab my purple now it's dark but it's not too too dark so I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue maybe just to make it a little bit darker 
And then I'm actually going to grab just the purple again, just so I can have a variety of different. So I'm going to start off with the lighter one. And I'm just going to do, oops, sorry, I put my hand in it. This kind of like dome shape. Like that. I don't want to do too, too much detail because I still want to keep it kind of more on the abstract side. And then the little lines. I want them nice and thin. That was a little too thick. Hold on. I'm going to let that dry for a second. I'm going to grab my smaller brush. I'm gonna grab a teeny teeny tiny brush for this. This is like a size zero something. Let me just fill in the center again. Actually, let's do the other center because that one's still a little bit wet. So the dome's kind of facing this way because that's the way the flower's facing. Grab a little bit of that darker color. Do the other one too here. Has these kind of like little lines on the dome almost. Grab a little bit of that darker color. Maybe just like a little peak of it here. All right. All right. Then. I'm going to take my tiny little brush. It doesn't have to be this tiny. I just made it this tiny. A little bit more purple. All right. And then I'm going to do the tiny little lines of the detail brush. Doesn't even have to be in every single, like, doesn't have to all be together. You can just do some of them if you want. Doesn't have to be completely clustered together if that makes any sense. I don't think I've ever used this brush. Brush. This is like one of my tester brushes that we were like picking out sizes for my Craftimo collection. So this is not sold. I'm sure they have detailed brushes though on their website, but this is <laughs> not available. So in case you're wondering, you can just use a small brush. It doesn't have to be this tiny. I like it though. I do like this. I want to make the centers a little bit darker, a little bit more blue, a little bit more purple, a little bit of green, kind of blackens it up a bit. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of like that though. Like, is this done? Is it not done? I don't Gonna add a little bit of pink, a little peak of pink in there. Like it's gonna be shooting out of the bud. And then the real question is always, is it done? <laughs> I feel like there needs to be another round of, or layer of petals here or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it. I think I need to leave it as I keep going. <laughs> okay. Do I need to darken just the bottom here, I think? And this is the fun thing, though, is that you can always keep going. Like, you don't have to stop. That's kind of how you learn. Sometimes you make really good mistakes. Sometimes you make awful ones. But, like, how are you going to learn if you don't try, right? So you got to make sure you remember this is just paper. Okay. I think that's, I think it's done. Um, I really like the change from my original. It's a lot of fun. Like this was so much fun to do a lot less intimidating than I thought it was going to be. So that's always good.
So after I finished that painting and I took a step back and I looked at it, I felt like it was lacking the softness that the original painting had. So I tried it again because I wanted to capture that softness. So I wet the whole paper and for my first layer, I just did a bunch of wet on wet to hopefully get the same kind of effect. But then once I let it dry, I did do some more um, structured kind of wet on dry technique over top just to make it look a little bit like the second and honestly I can't tell you which one I like better I don't know they're both similar but different if that makes sense and I really think this is a really great lesson for anyone whether you're an experienced artist or a beginner just creating the same painting in different ways using different techniques so this one I wet the whole paper to begin with the sec the first one that I just did um, at the beginning of this video I didn't so there's just fun different ways that you can create pieces and then you can take away what you like from each piece I feel like too many of us are just so nervous that we need to go in and create this masterpiece right away and it doesn't always work out and sometimes we try things that don't work out or we don't like and it's okay because that's how you develop yourself as an artist and that's also how you develop a style you try everything so I think I learned a lot from this and I had a lot of fun and I got two pretty cool paintings out of it and I'm no longer scared to try something that I did a long time ago so you'll have to let me know in the comments below which one do you like the best um, I love to hear your thoughts on this video and that's about it. So here is the final painting and you'll have to let me know which one you like better. Have a wonderful day guys. I'll see you soon. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.